It's time now for perspective. The French motto of liberty, equality, fraternity can be seen everywhere here in France. A constant reminder of the Enlightenment era ideals the Fifth Republic says it holds dear. But my guest today says that across French society, from education to gender parity, from policing to foreign policy, France is falling desperately short of those aspirations and doing a great disservice to its citizens in the process. Nabila Ramdani, journalist and author of Fixing France, How to Repair a Broken Republic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so let's begin with uh, how exactly uh, France is, in your opinion, a broken republic? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that, uh, uh, you know, France is a fascinating country in itself, uh, but it's, in, it's also seriously uh, misunderstood by a lot of people. So I wanted to use my personal experience, that is to say somebody who was born and who grew up in France, to, to construct a criticism uh, of the country. And by criticism, I don't necessarily mean something that is overly negative. There are, of course, plenty of positive aspects to my book. And it can also be considered as much of a guide as a critique uh, of modern France. But uh, as you quite rightly said, uh, one of the main arguments uh, of, of my book is that France uh, fails to live up to its uh, ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity uh, for all, uh, not least of all uh, in the economic uh, domain. Um, you know, uh, one of the aim of, of my books is to cut through the myths and describe a country where there is mass dissent, uh, including in the countryside, and where political institutions aren't really fit for purpose. And perhaps I would contend that the most, the, the, the major fault line uh, I describe is the absurd amount of power invested in one president and indeed uh, the very real danger that this one president might be a full-blown uh, extremist committed to full-blown state uh, racism, to put it bluntly. And how do you account for the amount of power the French president has compared to, say, other European leaders? Where does that come from historically? Well, you know, uh, one very important aspect of my book is that my background is in Algeria which was once France's largest and most prestigious uh, colony, and one that had a massive influence on the development of the current Fifth Republic. Very few realize this, and this is another reason why I was determined to write this book. Um, it is full of fascinating facts that should be common knowledge, but which aren't. And for example, straight away, I can tell you that the current constitution of France was created as an emergency measure to try and deal with the crisis caused by uh, the Algerian War of Independence in the late 1950s. France was being torn apart because French nationalists wanted to hold on to the jewel in, the, in their imperial crown, while many others, uh, not least of all Algerian nationalists, wanted liberation. And from that crisis uh, emerged a, a, a French Republic that effectively gave extraordinary power to a strong man, uh, uh, Charles de Gaulle, and ever since, French leaders have retained those powers. I'd like to talk uh, for a minute about multiculturalism here in France, especially given your background uh, as a, a Franco-Algerian uh, journalist. The French historically have rejected multiculturalism on the basis that society should place an emphasis on what unites people rather than what separates them. But you argue that that's a stance that only serves to further... Uh, entrench inequality. Can you explain your stance there? Well, I would make a broader point, if you like, about French society. I think, generally speaking, there's an old school socialist feel to much of France in that uh, people are expected to have very little ambitions, to be very conformist, and not to complain in return for a cradle to grey form of protection, whereby they keep their jobs, they have plenty of time off, and they can afford housing and other basic costs. What is happening is that this social contract is falling apart. Uh, but more um, sharply, there I say, for members of uh, ethnic minority groups. And that's why we get these mass protests, such as the Gilets Jaunes or the Yellow Vest, and indeed the constant tensions in the very large housing estates uh, across France. You effectively have tycoon families 
uh, running multinational at the top of the tree who get full governmental support from whoever is in power. And as you go downwards, you come across injustice, inequality, not to say discrimination. And this completely contradicts the ideals upon which France, modern France, is built. Uh, liberty, equality, uh, fraternity. So and a very what then, so, sorry to interrupt you, but what then is the remedy? Are you advocating something of a full-scale revolution. What are your, what are your uh, suggestions as to how France can come out of this situation? Well, I would suggest that, uh, for example, uh, we need to depart from the fact that France is, is built on impossible idealism. Uh, and this is why myths are so important to holding it together. And in some ways, we are uh, going through another uh, enlightenment with better communications and far more information exposing those, uh, those fault lines in France. I think a healthy dose of pragmatism uh, could um, salvage the situation. And I think first and foremost, a change should come from changing institutions. I think there's a very strong argument for a sixth republic, one that reviews institutions and adapts them to a changing world. And this means effectively more democracy and certainly a greater emphasis to parliamentary government rather than presidential government, uh, the way Emmanuel Macron has been ignoring parliament to push through his uh, most divisive legislation has been uh, scandalous uh, earlier this year. Half the country took to the streets uh, to oppose pension reforms, and yet he pushed through his reforms anyway. So more democracy is certainly the way forward. And uh, Fixing France uh, is written in English, not in French originally. I'm keen to know who you intend your audience to be with this book? Well, you know, fr France, as I said, is a fascinating country and it remains a riddle um, uh, for, for, for many, uh, for, for most observers around the world. They think of France as, you know, this uh, home of human rights and enlightenment that has uh, provided uh, the world with so much uh, of its uh, idealism. And yet it remains a bit quirky, a bit peculiar in many ways. And I think, you know, there's a fascination uh, for this country, uh, which, uh, frankly, um, is worldwide. Nabila Ramdani, uh, thank you so much for speaking to us on Perspective today. Nabila Ramdani, journalist and author of Fixing France, How to Repair a Broken Republic, which is published in just a few days' time.